It's the video game of January, really, isn't it? Hitman 3. Broad terms, what did you think? I really, really like this. As a fan of Hitman 1 and 2, uh, this was another set of cracking levels. I think it's pretty consistent across the board uh, for five levels. We'll get into the sixth in a bit. I think there's a couple of new personal favourites in there. Um, but generally, I thought across the board, they were they were pretty great. I thought there's some very subtle tweaks. I think the like some of the, the mission stories, which are like some of the guided experiences, have much juicier payoffs than they've had before. So there's some quite cinematic payoffs in some of the levels. You know, along with that, there's, you know, still tons of uh, like ingenious things to pick out and some really fun ways you can mess with the routines of the levels. I'm assuming most people are aware of Hitman and have played. Uh, I, I, I mean, briefly break it down for the three people that don't. Yeah, basically, uh, in Hitman, you have levels, you're given targets, you have to assassinate them. It's a stealth game. If you go in and action heavy, guards will get alerted. They'll probably kill you pretty quickly. I mean, you're a pretty capable fighter, but it's not an action game and, and, and not really how you're meant to play it. You can do it, but it's it's not satisfying. But they are basically sandbox levels with lots of AI characters all walking about. You are trying to get access to, you know, your targets by stealing clothes, disguises to get you access to new areas. Um, also by, like, interacting with the environment and um, sort of triggering things that might change your target's behavior. So if they spend their whole time in a busy party, you know, is there a way to call them to a secluded spot where you might be able to kill them? Can you do something elsewhere in the level that will kind of piss them off and, and get them to change their behavior and maybe give you a window of opportunity? So, yeah, it's it's this big kind of AI stealth sandbox uh, with a really pitch black sense of humor because it's fundamentally about, you know, murdering people in quite funny ways <laughs> often. It's basically this. <laughs> yeah. but Hitman 1 and 2 both had six levels a piece this has six levels they kind of run together it's weird like hitman 3 while a self-contained game with a self-contained story is is almost like a sort of a holding pen for all the if you own the previous games you can bring those levels into this too so hitman 3 ends up having all the levels and all your progress in all those levels kind of mixes to unlock things so it's this kind of grand sort of assassination sort of thing. Do you think that this is probably the most expansion pack feeling Hitman? Or more expansion pack feeling than, say, Hitman 2? Because there are fewer, I suppose, there's fewer new things in this, like, you know, apart from the camera, which is... Yeah, there's, so there's, there's, there's fewer, like, new features. Also, there's not any extra modes. This is just six levels. Just, I mean, they're massive, and you're, you know, I, I've, I've probably played this for about forty hours so far. I'm um, still got tons and tons to do, um, but this really does. It is very focused on like these six levels. Mm -hmm. I'd say what's new and maybe what stops it feeling like just six more levels is that it kind of ramps up the story a bit. There's been this story unfolding across the trilogy, and here. You know, it has a, it kind of comes into the missions a bit more, whether that's in like cinematic openings, like playable openings to the levels, which are just purely little narrative events, or sort of things that end the levels on with like purely narrative things. So, for example, I don't want to spot, I'm not going to spoil any of the mm. story beats, but there's one level where you have to assassinate two people, and then there is like a, a like a heist on a computer yeah. and an escape after you've done that heist, which is like a, a little sort of, uh, yeah, quite a cinematic kind of conclusion to that level. But then when you play the level a second time, you only have to kill the two targets. Like that cinematic thing, you can basically opt out of the cinematic intros and the cinematic outros, if that makes sense. Um, but the idea is that if you play it through, the just if you play each level once, there's a bit more of a kind of a, a bigger story there. I have only had time to kind of play through the levels once and some of the more kind of story driven bits haven't totally clicked with me. I mean, we can just get into the last level if you want. Not spoiling anything, but... It's basically a corridor. Yes. Quite a linear action sequence. Which, 
you know, if you have any history with Hitman, even if it's the, like, the, the new Hitmans, they're very open. Like, the thing I love about Hitman is you're always, at the beginning of levels, given the solution, which is your target. Here are the the, the person or people you have to kill. Mm. They could be miles away, you know? Because I think the first thing you do when you start a Hitman level is, um, it's called instinct, isn't it? Where you just hold the button and you're able to see their silhouette way off in the distance. You always have that feeling where you go, ha, huh, right, how am I going to get to them? And like, that journey is like that, to me, that's Hitman. Figuring how to get there, that's that's it, man. Whereas, yeah, that last level is, it's, uh, you don't really feel that. The last level feels like a Hitman Absolution level. And Hitman Absolution, which I quite liked, but it, it's sort of slightly infamous, and it's basically like Hitman, the cinematic reboot, and it sort of forgot, what was great about Hitman. It was still in there, but it was as interested in telling this big story with these big characters and it, it wanted very sort of cinematic framing for it all. And it basically turned the levels into quite linear journeys to do that. This game for five levels is not that big open world. I mean, there, there are sequences, like I said, the intros to some levels, the outros to some levels feel a little bit Hitman absolution in a bad way. But once you've completed a level once, you can basically opt out those by choosing different starting locations and whatnot. But the last level, it's them saying, this is the dramatic conclusion to that to our big Hitman story, where really the good Hitman story, or what I think most people enjoy, is telling their own story in a sandbox. You know, the stories that are good in Hitman are the hundreds of little dramas that are playing out in sandboxes and how you can interact with them and exploit them to kind of hurt other people. What happens between the missions in the in the kind of um, the, the actual sort of cinematics, I, I don't think it's particularly strong. I think it's quite sub-James Bond. Um, a lot of the characters are quite unknowable, unlikable. I think there's way too many, like, secret organisation names, too much <laughs> jargon. Everyone's always like, I am the herald from Providence and I'm here to find the constant. And you're like, what the fuck did you just say? Like, yeah. I, you know, hits with hammer instantly just to stop that bullshit from happening. I, I, I had that issue in the earlier games and I did here as well. It feels like it shouldn't be that hard to follow, but it kind of, it, it, it's, it's just so many different terms being thrown at you. You're like, uh, what? What's, what's going on here? Yeah, it's... It is, it's really baffling because the actual writing in the levels is good. Like when you're there, you observe the villains and through the level, the villains basically introduce like what total shits they are. Like you'll see them being just awful to people or you'll mm -hmm. find evidence of terrible things they've done. And by the time you actually get access to them, you're like, yeah, you know what? You deserve this. I'm after you. you know. And that's kind of a problem with Hitman is it's just a game about murdering a load of people. So it has to kind of make you feel a bit kind of good about that. I think Io have this grand cinematic vision in their head but it kind of is counterintuitive to the actual what makes the game good and i would also say that here like it fundamentally doesn't derail the levels for me and the levels are really strong like i said there are a, a couple of absolute standout locations i, I suppose right do you know i, I mentioned like the yeah, the final level is is very linear you have the murder mystery in the second level there's something in the third level as well that sort of takes the uh, formula and changes it slightly. So like, I appreciate that they've tried certain things. I just don't think everything has hit. I think the murder mystery is a massive hit. Uh, it's not something you can repeat, but I think that was great. What were your favourites? The level set in the, is it Mendoza, the, the vineyard? Mm. I think just, I think it's an absolute classic. I Like a beautiful location. I'm genuinely, I think it's the best looking location in the whole series absolutely just stunning vineyard and there's like a big almost like godfather-esque wedding on and you you walk in with a tux you get your invitation you present your invitation and just as you walk in like this band strikes up and these people start tangoing on the dance floor and it, it's so atmospheric and cool and like fucking with the vineyard and the winemaking process is yeah there are some amazing assassination opportunities there there's a really funny one where you tour the vineyard and you can basically lure one of your targets over to various different machines in the winemaking thing. 
And it's just the button cues made me laugh because one was like, press this button to like, let's go and look at the Great Crusher. And instantly your head's like, well, I know what's going to happen here. It's got a really good sense of humor. I like the third level. I won't say like what you're actually doing in there, but what makes it different. But it's just like nightclub in Berlin. And just as a location that captures like the audio of what those places are like in a way you're outside and you can hear the kind of Mm -hmm. sort of thumping bass and when you're in it is so loud and intense and there's this huge crowd dancing on the dance floor and it it's like visually it's it's absolutely amazing i mean it's a really cool location to look around and then you go outside and you almost feel that sense of like oh god i'm out of that din just like you do when you're in a noisy you know when you come out of a concert or whatever there are some within this world of assassination trilogy really terrific levels Mm. it is disappointing when say the final level does feel so disappointing because you're only dealing with six levels now these levels are to be replayed over and over and even you mentioned the nightclub level You think of the locations in that. You could split them up into like, you know, one outside the nightclub, two, the nightclub itself, three, the kind of base of the main gang there, four, smoking room area. You could really like split these levels up into all these different kind of like mini locations. I think there are some like really top-notch Hitman maps. I give it a hearty recommendation in terms of like value. I think like if you're into Hitman, you won't feel like robbed of it. I know. If I was to play just one of the three games, I would still probably play two because of the locations, because of the sniper. There's just a little bit more to it. But as a Hitman fan, it's they are essential as a trilogy. Overall, as Mr. Hitman, very happy with Hitman 3. Absolutely. And feeling even better about Bond because... There's some levels in here which are just basically audition tapes for Bond. The vineyard level particularly is just like, 